All right, let's roll this morning. Uh, we're looking at um, exploring Eden treasures. Exploring Eden treasures. And this morning, I want to just charge us before we dance. We're going to dance this morning. Every first Sunday of the month, we set it aside to dance. Before, we used to dance forward. But we've noticed people don't dance forward. So we are dancing where we are standing. But we will dance. Glory to Jesus. Can we say glory to Jesus? Amen. So we're going to dance. But before you dance, I just want to charge you. And it's just one quick charge. And it is get ready. Look at your neighbor. Tell them, get ready. ready. Tell your neighbor, get ready. ready. Say, get ready for breakthrough. Say, get ready for mouth watering. Miracles. In your life. In Jesus' name. All right. I'll look at... um, Matthew chapter 13, Matthew 13, verse 44 to 46. Matthew 13, 44 to 46. It seems I like Matthew a lot. Um, I don't know. I just like him. I've preached more from Matthew than many, many, many uh, books of gospel. And you know, it's very interesting uh, that uh, the way the New Testament was written, some of the books that you thought were the beginning were not the beginning, especially the Gospels. Many of the Gospels, the, pretty much all, all the Gospels were written after the epistle. It was just arrangement. The people that arranged it just made sure they arranged it like that. So the Bible, uh, the Gospel, usually were written at the later time because people wanted to get the teachings of Jesus and the records of Jesus out there. All right. Uh, Matthew 13 14 to 40, uh, 44 to 46. Matthew 13, 44 to 46. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, went and sold all he had and bought that field. My prayer for you this morning and this month is that you will find it. Yeah. There are people sitting in this room that have not found it. You will find it. Yeah. Because every man that God sends into this, uh, there are eats, there are treasures that God has already packaged in your life. And you will need to find it. My prayer for you this morning, this month, is that you will find such. uh. The Bible says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Then in Luke chapter 14 and 28, that's my second reading. Luke chapter 14 and verse 28. The Bible says, the kingdom of heaven is this Luke 14? You had, this is my notes. Luke 14, 28. Is it coming? All right. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? Another translation says, won't you count the cost? Or in my own translation, won't you prepare? Won't you get ready? The mining of treasure requires some things. Getting treasures, getting to eat, getting to the things that are hidden, it requires something. In fact, by definition, treasures are not apparent. Treasures are not everywhere. That's why they are called treasures. That's why gold has value. The value of gold is because it is cursed. It is because it is exotic. It is because you don't see it everywhere. You don't see it all the time. There are lookalikes. There are fakes of it. And many people are using the fake. But when you are talking of the real deal, it is not everywhere. That is why it is costly. Because it takes a long process to get it out. And the word of God says, if you want to get to mining things, there are things that you need to do. And that's what we want to focus on this morning. I've shared a story here before, and a best repetition, of two guys that went to consult, and people consult differently. You know, the best consultation you should do is to God himself. 
but these guys went to consult, and uh, it was like a diviner, somebody that looks into future. The best way to get future is from the word of God, because the word of God by itself is futuristic, and anything it says will happen. Uh, your word, O oh Lord, is forever settled in heaven. But these guys went to meet somebody to tell them the future. And the guy told one of them, he said, you, Mr. A, you are going to do very well. You are going to succeed beyond measure. And then he looked at Mr. B. He said, Mr. B, it's a pity, but it's going to be hard for you. You are going to struggle through life, and you are going to even technically be the servant of this other Mr. A. So Mr. A was very excited. Mr. A had a promising future. Mr. A was thinking to himself that, wow, I've made it. Wow, I've succeeded. Wow, I'm going to live the li dream. I'm, I'm going to live the life. And then Mr. B was like, what did I just hear now? My life has just been played before me, and it's not going to look good. It looks like the Star Wars, is this the Star Wars film? The end game one, that they ended it before they began it. And then when they began it, they now went back to the end and then tried to fix the end, all right? <laughs> if you don't know it, it's okay. Don't just, it's just stay there. Let me not spoil it for you. <laughs> you. You can go see it some other time, you know? But so this Mr. B was already like, look at the end of my life in my front. But Mr. B now said something, and that's kind of where I'm going this morning. Mr. B said, look, if... I am going to be a nobody. At least I will put in some effort. I will not die without trying. I will not give up without making an attempt. I am going to try to do something. So Mr. A, because they were in an agricultural society, Mr. A just went back home and he just started sleeping. The money will come. I'm going to hit the jackpot. Something good is going to happen. You know, just believing it will happen. Then Mr. B went to work. He now started farming, he started doing all kinds of things. And then Mr. B started to succeed. Mr. B started to have things. Mr. B started to be the opposite of what they told him he was going to be. Mr. A started to be, be broke. Mr. A started to be the opposite of what they told him that he was going to be. And at the end of time, uh, after a while, the two of them found themselves again in front of the divine, and they were asking him and saying, what's up about the future? Uh, I thought the future was supposed to be, especially Mr. A, I thought I was supposed to be very, very successful. I thought I was supposed to make it. And then Mr. B was like, I thought I was supposed to not succeed. I thought my life was supposed to be this. And then the divine had just made him understand that, look, the fact that you have success and your future is bright, you need to add your own input to that future. Can I get an amen to that? Amen. So, if you have had anything from the word of God, the word of God says, <laughs> I mean, the word of God to us in this season is mega, for example. If you have had that and you are thinking, oh my God, Pastor, he has been saying mega. That means I'm going to experience mega. Please, can you get me that white sauce? I'm going to experience mega. You know, and you are so excited about it. You are, you, you know, getting very comfortable and all of that kind of thing. Can I tell you this, that that mega thing that God will do, he will not do it irrespective of you. You will have to be present. Can somebody say amen to that? Sometimes what people call miracle is magic. God is not a magician. Look at your neighbor. Say, God, God. is not a magician. God does not perform magic. No. It will be magic for Mr. A to have really succeeded. It will be magic. God usually will put his power on the man, but he will not do it without the man. He will not do it without the man. I, I love what, what one of my mentors said some time ago. He said, any faith that will put all the responsibility on God is an irresponsible faith. Any faith. No matter what you are believing for, and you th think everything, God will do everything. No. Somebody once wrote, he said, God will not do for man what man can do for himself. Oh, yes. If I can write my name down in an exam, God will not write my name for me. Can somebody say amen? amen. Even if they pour a bottle of oil on my head. <laughs> Anointing service, I'm going for this again. God, just write my name for me. <laughs> I think it was one of, I won't point, let me not point. But one of our pastors once said, he said one day he was fasting. And it was almost like God, almost like lift me up. No, 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 God doesn't do all those kind of things. Because that would be magic. You want to levitate or you want to move up. You know, just, God, just show me something. Just do, God is not spooky. 
Can somebody say amen to that? God is not spoken because, I mean, look, look at even creation. If God was like many of us, one day, one, just one day, instead of rain, to be fire. <laughs> it would just be fire because you just want to show people that I am a powerful God. <laughs> you know, instead of, you just, fire would just start falling. Now there are some, because of the curse that Adam brought on the earth, the earth sometimes does some funny thing. You see earthquakes, you see some, all this fire that happened in California. It's just because of the reaction to the curse. Because you know that when Adam and Eve sinned, the Bible says God did not only speak to the man and the woman, God also spoke to the ground. So that's why you see tsunamis and all of that. It's not God, it's just curse because of the curse, uh, the, the, the fall. So when you see all those tsunamis, when people call it the acts of God, really it's the acts of Adam. <laughs> it's not the acts of God. God didn't do that. It was the sin of Adam that brought a curse on the earth and the earth sometimes does that. But God in himself is a very predictable God. You can predict it, God. God will act like the word of God says God will act. Can somebody say amen to that? So, this morning and throughout this month, I want to draw us in a particular direction uh, where getting treasures is concerned. Where uh, treasures, which can mean um, uh, uh, our talents, uh, treasures which can also mean resources. When I was growing up as a young child, uh, you, you know, in church, one of the things that I didn't like is that I just didn't like church people. Because it seemed that they used to deceive themselves. You know, they would just be saying, my money will come. My breakthrough will come. My this one will come. And I don't see it. So I used to be like, I don't get it. When I grow up, I won't be like these people. I'm not going to be saying all these things because I'm not seeing it. And do you know that it is not because God was not doing it. It is because sometimes we put all the responsibility on God. We don't take our own responsibility. And this month, by the grace of God, God will show us areas how we can take responsibility. And the treasures that we carry on the inside of us will find expression in the name of Jesus. Somebody once said, the best time to do anything is yesterday. The best time is yesterday. The second best time or the next best time is now. I know that this is me. Some people are putting too many things away. They are, you know, procrastinating. I will, I will do that. I will do that. I will do that. The word of God to you this morning is that now is the time for action. Look at your neighbor. Tell them now is the time for action. In the story that I told you of Mr. A and Mr. B, Mr. B.A. did not know that what will make that future happen will be what he does now. It will be what he does now. Somebody said once, he said, the best way to predict the future is to prepare for it. The best way to predict the future is to do things in the now. We, we, we need to come to these terms, even as church people, even as we believe in miracles, even as we believe in God showing up, is that, ladies and gentlemen, the I, I can do something about what God wants to do tomorrow. I have a part in it. I can do something about it. That future, that colorful future, that enviable future. You know, God was telling Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11, He said, I know the thought that I have towards you. I have the thought of peace. I have the thought to give you a future and a hope. But Jeremiah needs to understand that that future and that hope, Jeremiah, you can do something about it. And you can do something about it now. Look at your neighbor. Tell them now. Look at your neighbor, tell them now. So now I can structure myself so that whatever that treasure is, I will be able to maximize it. I will be able to use it. I will be able to come into the fullness of it. I will be able to make uh, use of it. The Bible talked about in that scripture that we read earlier on today that uh, the kingdom of God is like treasure and that treasure we are looking for that treasure but he now said in Luke chapter 14 and, and verse 28 Luke chapter 14 and 28 he said the way one of the ways we look for treasure or we get ready for big things to happen is that we count the cost or we get ready for that thing to happen we prepare for it we prepare for it so this morning, how do I get ready? How do I get ready for big things to happen for in my life is that I begin to prepare for it. Because you see, preparation says a lot of things. One of the things that preparation says is that 
I believe things will change. I believe things will change. There are many times when we are praying, oh Lord, do this, do this, do that. And we are not doing anything in preparation to show that we believe that things will change. There was a story of one young guy that I, I heard several years ago and it so blessed me. They said that they were praying that land had not experienced rain in a, in a little bit. And then they were going to pray for rain. And everybody came to the prayer meeting ready to pray for rain. But only a little boy brought the umbrella. So every other person came to that prayer unprepared. They were asking God to do something that they were not ready for him to, to, they were not ready to receive from him. Many of us are like that. We have been asking God, do this, do this. But there is nothing in the, that we are doing to correspond to the fact that we are expecting him to do something. We are not preparing ourselves. We are not preparing for it. We are not getting our umbrella. We are not coming to the place where we are expecting rain to fall. And we are not coming without. You need to have corresponding actions. There are corresponding actions when you say you have faith. You know, the, the, a big part of the book of James was James trying to say this. That there are some people that will say, I have faith. But they don't have any works that they are showing using for their faith. And James was not saying, look. It is not possible to tell me that you have faith and I can't see your works. I will know that you believe God when I see that you are acting in line with what you believe God for. There are some people that they are believing God for abundance and for plenty. And the way they are doing and the things that they are doing shows that they are not expecting God to do, uh, give them abundance. They are living and doing things that will bring them anti-abundance. But that won't be your experience in Jesus' name. So preparation says this. You believe that things will change. You believe that things will not always be this. Ladies and gentlemen, I have come to tell you as a servant of the living God that the current situation will not last. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that person is on this side. Whatever is putting you under pressure, it will not last. In fact, this morning I have come to sound that the expiry date for that issue is now. So my preparation shows that I believe that things will change. And ladies and gentlemen, if we serve a God that answers prayers, if we serve a God that hears, if we serve a God that is not just deaf and we are just praying to it, that God changes things. So when we prepare, when we get ourselves ready, when we come as if we are ready, we are telling God that we know that things will change. So in our finances, when we prepare, in our marriage, when we prepare, you know, Take marriage, for example. One time, I used to, I just like to ask unconventional questions. So one day, I, I think I asked somebody, and I was asking, I said, in the Bible, nobody did any premarital counseling. So why are you people always disturbing all that? Before you get married, you need to talk to people. You need to learn about, I'm like, there wasn't too many premarital counseling. And I think the person told me this. You know, I think I've asked the question from several people, so I may be mixing more than one answer together. But uh, these are all the answers I've gotten. That in the Bible, it was still a small society then. Things were, most of the time, the world was a little smaller. Complexity has not gone as it has gone now. Family values has not gone all over the place as it has gone now. And even then, many of those marriages, they still struggle. Is it not better to prepare for something that is supposed to be a lifetime than not to prepare for it at all? So, so many people are going into marriages, you know, they, they, they do like this uh, series, I don't know on what TV it is, but I've not really watched it, I, I've seen the advert, uh, Married at First Sight or something like that. Has anybody heard about that? Married at First Sight. So, these guys, they will just meet themselves one time and then afterwards they will get married. Do you know that's how many people are getting married? Even the people that have seen themselves, because they didn't learn anything, they didn't prepare for anything, they didn't study anything, they just felt that oh, God will do it now. We are praying. <laughs> the people that have having issues in their marriage, they are also afraid. And my issues in marriage is not because of bad people. Because there are good people, two people that love each other, but, you know, it's much more than that. It takes some level of preparation to get ready for a great manifestation. You will have great manifestation. In the name of Jesus. So preparation says that you believe that things will change. I want you to say loud and clear. Say, I believe that things will change. For the better for me. Another thing that preparation says is this. Preparation says, I don't want to be surprised when I get to my prepared place. 
Because it is possible for you to get to a place that was prepared for you and you are not prepared for that place. Every time God is preparing a place for people, he's also preparing them for that place. Most people want the prepared place, but they are not prepared. There are many people that have arrived at their prepared place, and the prepared place did not look like the prepared place because they were not prepared for it. There are people that have arrived at moments that they could not seize because they were not ready for that moment. Look at the story of David. David was anointed. Was anointed here. And the day David will be manifested to the world, he did not know. He had been anointed here. You would have thought that the anointing, after that anointing, there would just be a ceremony and they would put crown on him. He did not know that what will get the crown on his head will be one opportunity that every other thing that he had been learning will prepare him for that opportunity. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes you may find yourself doing things that don't look related. There are things that you've seen yourself in doing now. You're like, how will this add up to that place? How can I from here get to that place? I, I, I've seen myself in that. There were several years ago, I knew not too long after I came into the United States, even though I was doing IT stuff and all of that, I knew I was going to pastor. I knew. I knew. And so I found myself in some situation where I, I was not even talking to human beings. You know, I was doing very mundane things and I was like, one day I was telling God, I was like, what's all this? Why am I doing all these things? Even in the church. It didn't look like what I would do. And, and it was not even a redeemed church. So there was urging me to go and tell them that, excuse me, you don't know who I am. I have been ordained. And, I, and I'm serious. At that time, I had been ordained. Because I was, the first time, you know, in the redeemed church, there were several ordinations. The first time I was ordained, I was 21 years old. Most people didn't know because sometimes I've always had this big frame. So they, they thought I was bigger than me. But I was 21 years old. So before I came to the United States, I had been ordained. So nobody knew that I had oil on my head and the oil on the head, I was doing the wrongest thing that did not even relate to it. So I was just disturbed in my spirit. And one day God just said, join the prayer department. And I, I joined. So I will be doing some of the mundane things, clerical things, very, you know, talk about, oh, let's plan for this. And I'm like, that's not, that's not me. I, I, we can plan, but let us call that fire. That's the one thing that I think God is, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I was like, give me a microphone, let's do revival or something like that. That's what I thought I would be doing. But I was dealing with little, little things. So I joined the prayer people, and then I would pray, just pray a little extra, you know, before the prayer. And then the way I was praying, I think some people will be like, <laughs> something is touching this guy a little bit. <laughs> and then after a while, I bubbled up. I led the prayer team. After a while, I bubbled up. I found myself in other expression. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say there are some things that I thought were stupid then that were really useful, even now, that I'm not having the mind. So I'm trying to tell somebody that you're, the, the, there are places that you find yourself now. You think that God has forgotten that. What about the thing that he has put on the inside of me? What about the treasure? But you see, he, 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 though he has anointed David, David must be prepared so that the day that David will see the opportunity for the treasure that has already been uh, 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 placed on his life to now start finding meaningful expression. David will probably use many skills from different days, from different times, from different seasons to make that a reality. So what God is doing through you is not wasting you. It's preparing you. Tell your neighbor, say, God is preparing me for something big, for something mega, and I won't miss it. I say I will not miss it. So I don't want to be surprised when I get to my prepared place. That's why I don't waste my opportunities. I don't waste my moments. I don't waste where I am now. I don't waste what I'm doing now. Even if it does not get related. I put in all my best. I do everything I want to do. I, I, I can do. I, I, I put myself into it. Even if they suggest me to come and do it. Because in David's story, there were things that you have thought David would have done. They now suggested him one time to come and be playing songs for a demon-possessed king. When they should have taken the crown from the king and put on his head. You know, if some of us be like, what, what's all this now? Me, I'm, I'm king in waiting. I'm already king. And then you just go to the, one day you just tell the king, I said, look, 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 look. Let's stop all this nonsense. I've already been made king. So, just die. 
sir, just die, just die, just die. Or you may not even tell him, you just go and pray those further and die prayers. That God, everyone sitting on my throne, dethroned them. <laughs> but David did not do that. Because what God wants to do for you is that when you get to that your prepared place, you should be able to occupy it. I'm praying for you. You will get to your prepared place. Amen. And you'll be prepared for your prepared place. Amen. So a prepared place needs a prepared person. In Luke chapter 19 and 44, Jesus was talking to some people. Jesus said, some of you have missed the day of your visitation. You were not ready when I was ready for you. When I showed up, you were not there. When things showed up for you, you were not there. Do, do, do you know one thing? That most people that have won the lottery, many of them have become broke. Most of them. Why? It, it, it doesn't take, it's not the plenty resources that makes people rich. It is the richness in you that makes the resources that you have that makes it, makes you rich. The same income, the same amount of money some rich people have now, if they give it to some people, give them five years, they will not have money again. So it's not, sometimes the more money, it is just more planning. Can somebody say amen to that? So in every area of life, planning and preparation is very important. Every area of life. And one of the things that I like that has been happening in our church that I'm not so happy and, you know, hopefully throughout this month I will encourage and I will challenge people to get involved is what is happening in the small group. Can somebody put their hands together for Jesus, for our small group? The teachers have been doing an amazing job. And one of the things they have been doing is helping people see that there are opportunities where they are now. Because that's the problem of human beings. We are always thinking where we are now is not, we don't have enough opportunities. I, I, I need tomorrow, I need tomorrow. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, one of the things they've been showing us in do, in do, is that now we can start doing some little, little things. Because like I said in the beginning, I said the best time to prepare for tomorrow, to, to do anything, is yesterday. The second best time is now. And so the, one of the things they've been doing is showing us opportunities and areas where we can do better with our finance. And if you have not been attending, you are not doing well. Hmm? You need to attend. Can somebody say amen? amen? Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. Amen. Have you ever been to any small group meeting? If they don't say anything, tell them what's your name. Get their name and then hope to talk to them after service and invite them to the small group because this weekend we are going to have another one. So what am I saying this morning? I, I, I'm saying that one of the things that, that we have been learning from this, our small group is this, you need to plan. And they've been talking about money primarily and you know, I'm trying to broaden it a little bit this month and not just talk about money and talk about other things, other treasures and all of that kind of thing. But one major thing they've been talking about is we need to plan. We need to prepare. We need to get ready. Because you see, when you get ready, when you plan, you are going to make what God wants to do. You are going to make it happen. Let's read the scripture and I'll tie it together. Habakkuk chapter 2. Let me start from verse 1. Habakkuk chapter 2. From verse 1. Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 1. The word of God says this. It says, I will stand at my watch and, my sta and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Verse 2. It says, then the Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. What God was saying is this. Write down the plan. Write down, uh, make the steps plain. Make the plan plain. Make the things that you want to do. Put them down and have a strategy. Don't be a facade. There needs to be a strategy. Even though I am telling you things, even though I am involved in your life, I want you to understand that you need to distill whatever I give to you. You need to distill it into small reasonable, actionable steps. You need to distill it to small, reasonable, actionable steps. So this morning, let me tell you three things 
that I believe can get you ready. In your finances, in your home, in, in anything that you are involved in right now, you can get ready for another level. Because ladies and gentlemen, as long as you are still alive, there is nothing God has given you that has reached its peak. Everything in your hand can still grow. Everything in your hand has the potential to become better. Your finance has the potential to become better. Your marriage has the potential to become better. Your, your academics has the potential to become better. Whatever, even your relationship with God has a possibility to become better. Anything you regard as treasure, one of the ways you can mine those things is to understand that it can become better. And these are some of the things that can help you to get there. These are crystal points that can help you to get there. Number one, access where you are. Huh. Access where you are. My wife is doing adult education. No, she's not doing that. She's going back to school. <laughs> I'm going to put her on the spot. You know. And one of the material that they are reading, I just got caught my attention, the self-aware leader. Because they, they found out that most people are their greatest enemy. They don't know what they don't know. They don't know where they are. They don't know their current state. There are many people that do not know that the elephant in the room, they are the ones. Because we all have blind spots. We all don't, we can't really see our back. So one of the things you want to do is that you want to access where you are. You want to do like an inventory. Where am I now? Where am I now? In this, this thing called academics, where am I now? Where is our marriage? Where is my finance? Where are we? Where, what's our state? Because one of the things you can do to yourself is to be sincere with yourself. Look at yourself and tell yourself, say, I will not lie to myself again. I will not deceive myself again. Say, I will tell myself the truth. The best person that can tell you the truth is you. Because you can't do anything to you. <laughs> If me, I tell you, there are some people that I know something I can tell them now. But because of kindness sake, I think to myself, if I tell this person this, it may break them. But if God, if they can tell themselves that, you know it will help them. You know it will help them. So I'm praying for you this month. Your eyes will open. Yes. And you will realize where you are in the name of Jesus. Yes. The Bible said, whoops, time has gone. <laughs> I need to go. The Bible said in Genesis chapter 3 concerning um, Adam. In verse 8, God asked Adam a question that you would have thought God would not ask him. God said, Adam, where are you? Are you kidding me? How can God be asking where somebody is? Omnipresent? God of, that is everywhere? God that does not live in time? God that lives in, in the eternity? Is in the future as well as in the present and is still in the past? How can that God be asking Adam, where are you? You know that question, even the way Adam answered it, showed that it was not a locational question. It was to access a status. Because when Adam was going to answer, Adam said, when I heard your voice, I hid my face. Because God was asking, you, you were supposed to be in a realm in the spirit. You were supposed to be in a realm, but you have left that realm. God was now saying to him, Adam, can you locate yourself? Can you find yourself? Can you access yourself? So, And God is currently constantly asking us that and if your finances if my finances if our my relationship if my academics will move to another level the first thing i need to do is i need to know where i am now i need to access where i am so the first thing you need to do on this way or to get ready or to start preparing is to access where you are right now the next thing is to determine where you want to be determine where you want to be or ask god or consult Based on some of the things God has been dealing with, determine where you want to be, uh, where you want to be financially. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there are many people, they'll just say, I, I, I want to be rich. What does that mean? What does that mean? You need to have some level of plan. And that's why I'm encouraging you, please go to the small group. It will help you on the finance level. But what about marriage? Where do we need to be? What about my career? Where do I want to be? You'll be surprised there are very many people, they don't have anywhere they want to be. And the easiest way to get to nowhere is to have nowhere to go. <laughs> That's deep, right? <laughs> the easiest way to be lost in life is just not to have like a goal of I'm going somewhere. Imagine me leave my house and just say, I'm driving. Do you know I won't even know when I arrive where I'm supposed to go? 
Because I just said I'm driving. I didn't say I'm driving to church. I'm driving to grocery. I'm dri- I, di- I just said I'm driving. So I'm praying for somebody this morning that not only will you be able to know where you are now, God will show you where you ought to be in the name of Jesus. And it will help you to get there in Jesus' name. And then the last thing I will say this morning, and we'll pray, and we'll be ready to dance, is this. Measure your progress. Measure your progress. Can I tell you why many New Year resolutions fail? No measurement system. No measurement. You are not checking yourself out. You are not checking how, how are these things going. How is our family doing? How is our relationship doing? How, how am I doing? That's why they test us in school. That's why there's test. Test is to prove, to show how you have done, how far you have done. Because without test, you will not, we will not know where you are. So you need to measure. You need to track. If it is finances, you need to track. In your relationship, your marriage, you need to measure. There are many marriages. The day the marriage failed was not the day it failed. It had, it had failed 10 years ago. They found out that it failed 10 years after it had failed. Because they were not measuring. They were not checking out anything. Sometimes you meet people in a relationship. One person thinks the relationship is good. The other person thinks, my God. I don't, I, I don't even need to be talking about hell. I'm already in hell. But there's another person thinking like, wow, this is heaven on earth. But the other person, because, and because there is no measurement, there is disparity. So you need to measure. You need to ask questions. You need to review, review finance, review relationship, review your job, review your career. Don't just be doing everything and just be so busy. There are too many busy people in our world. That's why we have very few effective people. We're just doing everything. We're not measuring. My prayer for you this month, uh, that the hidden treasure that God has put inside of you, he will help you to get ready in the name of Jesus. He will help you to access where you, are, where you are right now in the name of Jesus. It will help you uh, to know where you ought to be in the name of Jesus. And it will help you to access yourself on your way to getting there in Jesus' name.